igreja, com a paz do Senhor. Amém. Eu convido a todos a abrirmos nossa Bíblia. I invite everyone to open our Bibles. Open our Bibles in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, I believe that the sounds are a little bit too loud. Luke uh, chapter 5 from verse 1. Who doesn't have a Bible here? It's here in the projection. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, and he stood by the lake of Genes Red and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had uh, stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into deep and let down your nest to for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at you, your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signed to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both, boat, both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinner, a sinful man, O Lord. For he had all who were with him were astonished as the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, from now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Let us sit down.
Amen. Amen. Lord to Jesus, that's the promise that is upon the church. Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, the spiritual Jerusalem that the Father has prepared for His church. And that's where we are going to go to. Because we know that when this day arrives, everything will pass. And will be the day of our victory as a church. And brethren, the text that we just read here in the chapter 5 of the book of Luke speaks of the experience of a few men and especially one called Simon. And this experience was right at the beginning of the ministry of the earthly ministry of Jesus. The entire ministry of Jesus lasted about three years. And Jesus lived here lived this world, had his birth, his childhood, his youth, until the moment when he was taken away. Everything he has done for love of the life of man. And in no moment Jesus looked to his own ego. In no moment he uh, looked at what he was taking away as a benefit because, in fact, Jesus is God. And he was at the right hand side of the Father. Jesus was not born here in this world, but Jesus is eternal. From the beginning of the creation, from Genesis, Jesus was already and he is present present in the life of man. But here Jesus comes to the world because no other man, no other creature would be able to do what he has done for us, which was to be able to be victorious against the greatest enemy of man, which is death. In Jesus, man has the right to become eternal. In Jesus, man, man has the right to die for this life and to continue living forever in the presence of a God that is true, God that is love, the God that can do everything for the life of man. And Jesus starts his ministry here. He begins by... Um, speaking about to men about a kingdom of heaven something that no one nobody had ever heard before a way for men to go to God not on, not from his own actions not for not through fulfilling a commandment a lot that something that was given to Moses and a nation but now Jesus begins to show to men a way of salvation through grace And Jesus now begins to preach, operating miracles, healing a couple of people. Now he begins to be followed. He now begins to be a person where he, wherever he passed by, people would gather to come close to him, try, trying to get a blessing, something for their own benefit. And Jesus begins in this chapter, chapter 5 of the book of Luke. He now begins to choose his disciples. But before that, Jesus already knew who he was going to choose. He was already searching people's hearts. Jesus was already causing those that were going to be his followers, was causing them to know about his word was not only his word was the word of God was the word of the father that's why it was so successful when he preached that's why there it was such a positive result whenever he preached the multitude the people that were around Jesus they would leave amazed 
and there is a uh, um, occasion in which people went to so a few soldiers went to imprison Jesus and Jesus was there preaching and the soldiers would um, uh, order a prison they said oh let us wait let, let's not cause uh, disturbance here let's hear and then once the crowd has left then we will imprison him and then they began to hear the word of Jesus and then they went back without prison catching Jesus and they said we have never heard anybody speaking like him just because the way Jesus spoke the word of power Jesus would transform man's heart and transforms to this day transforms to this day man's heart transforms lives and causes the lost to find a direction causes the one who has no hope for life to have a hope for life and so great is the power of the Word of God because the words were not Jesus's but they were the words of the Father he himself used to say the words are not mine they are words from the Father and on Jesus where he passed by people would follow him many seeking for seeking their own benefit bread free food healing whoever doesn't want that everybody wants if you like bread he would perform the multiplication of bread and the fish a person would come to Jesus with an infirmity or leprosy a, the paralytic with any physical problem he would heal who doesn't want that everybody wants it but that's not the reason why Jesus came to the world he didn't come to the world simply to give a cure, physical cure to a man Jesus didn't come simply to bring a result that will in a temporary way bring joy to men Jesus came to the world to fix the central problem of man which is the lack of God the reason why Jesus came to the world was to bring men to have a true contact with Creator to have an experience with God to be able to speak with God and to be heard by God to be able to cause men to be a target of the great love of God and people would go to Jesus and now here on chapter 4 Jesus healed a couple of people he even healed Peter's, Peter's mother-in-law before Peter was called to become a disciple he, Jesus had already healed his mother-in-law people even thought well how can Peter now follow Jesus because Jesus healed <laughs> Peter's mother-in-law it's a miracle <laughs> I don't understand that but the word shows us that Peter was truly the chosen chosen by God and now he begins to come close to man Jesus begins to uh, carry salvation that he had to, to deliver them the peace that we can only have in Jesus to the point that when Jesus came to a location where Peter was with his uh, co-workers Simon here was Peter but then Jesus began to call him Peter but now Jesus goes to the Galilee lake uh, the lake of Genesaret thanks to its length and extension people would call the Galilee Sea and it was there where Peter and his co-workers would work every day the livelihood of Peter was being a fisherman he had a little boat with his friend always fishing and that was his profession and when Jesus comes where Peter was seeking once again Peter Jesus now sees a multitude following him so now Jesus enters into Peter's boat that's what we just read he saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets then he got into one of the boats which was Simon's 
and asked him to put out a, a little from the land. So then Jesus begins to speak, begins to preach on Peter's boat, Simon's boat. He uses it as a puppet. He begins to minister, to speak of what was salvation, of what was the way in which men would be able to reach salvation for his sins, whatever men needed to do in order to come to God. And everything was inside of the boat of Peter. They, he had two boats, but he chose Peter's boat. But after Jesus, Jesus preached, he now says, Peter, let's go farther away into the sea. Let's leave this place and go to high sea. And then Peter said, Lord, let's go. And when they came into a certain distance from the shore, Jesus tells Peter, show the net here. And Peter said, Jesus, I don't want, I don't want to sound like I'm rebellious, but I have been fishing here the whole night. We didn't catch anything. Today, the sea is not good for fishing. The situation is difficult. We spent the whole night here trying, and we are fish, uh, experienced, experienced fishermen. We were even watching the net, watching the net when you arrived because today was bad. I hope that uh, tomorrow we are going to do better. But, but even so, because you asked, I'm going to do it. And then Peter goes and throws the net according to what Jesus had instructed him, exactly on the place where Jesus had told him a brother, the miracle to happen. The miracle happened. Because the sea that was not good for fishing, they caught so much fish that they almost sank. They almost even had a, a greater problem. If Jesus was not there, the boat, everybody would sink. They would have had to go back to the shore so, uh, swimming. So now Peter s made a sign to the other boat, and, s and, and the other boat came to help, and they helped to bring the fish. And the Bible says that Peter and his friends went back to the shore from that fishing trip with their boats filled with pe with fish. My brethren, what Jesus, what God has for us through this experience, what God has for us is that the Lord always goes towards men. You who entered here tonight, it was not in vain your visit here. It was the result of many prayers. It was the result of a lot of effort from the church. We, it was days of prayer. Throughout this, May, throughout this month, we have been praying for our co-workers. And it is a way for us to evangelize. It's a way for us, for the church, for God to use the church so that He may bring to this environment, the spiritual environment, not for the Maranatha Country Church, but for this church that has no name, for this people that has no denomination, that has no nationality, for this people, this faithful church that God is building throughout years and that is preparing these people to live in heaven. And this month we are doing this. You know why? Because the blessing that God has operated in our lives is so great that we want to share it. It is like Peter here. There were so many fish that he even called his friends. And that's what we are doing here. We pray for our family members. We pray for our country. We pray for our neighbors. In order to demonstrate what God is doing in our midst. 
And you who entered here, it was not in vain your visit. It was not in vain the moment in which you accepted the invitation. You know why? Because God already has your name in his list. God was already uh, searching Peter's heart, working on him, revealing to himself, revealing to the people that were around Jesus. You also have been a target of our prayer. And you are the target of great God's great love. But in order for this to happen, you need to open your heart. It was not enough for Peter to reveal himself to Peter or having healing, having healed uh, Peter's uh, mother-in-law. It was not only important for Jesus to have gone to, towards Peter, having chosen Peter's boat, but was also very important the actions of Peter, of, of, of opening up his heart and allowing Jesus to enter into his boat. And this boat here is symbolizes this man's heart. Because when man opens his heart up and allow Jesus to enter and make dwelling there, it is because man is accepting the invitation of God. Because it is not enough for you to hear about God. It's not enough for you to hear a song of praise. It's not enough for you to hear a testimony of a servant of God. It's not enough for you to hear that the life of the servant of God is a life in which he was waiting for God to operate, where God is renewing, where God is healing, where God is manifesting, operating miracles on behalf of your life. It's not enough for you to just hear that, but you need to open up your heart and allow Jesus to to show to you what is revelation in order for you to absorb the revelation in the action of God in your life. Peter opened his heart to Jesus in order for him to enter. And more than that, he began to hear the voice of Jesus. He said, all of this that we have done all night, we have, we're tired, we're frustrated, nothing happened. But because you are saying, we're going to go to high sea, going to throw our nets. We're going to do everything because that's exactly when man stops hearing about Jesus and begins to hear the word of Jesus directed towards him, completely geared towards him. He gives heed to the voice of God. God demonstrates his great love. And Lord, it is because of your word that we're going to do this. And from that moment forward, God operated in the same way that God has operated in the life of the brethren here in the church, in the same way that God has operated in the life of the church, generally speaking. Why? Because this is what God does. God called the people in order to demonstrate through these people His power. And that's what He wants to do. Peter, step away, go far, far away from the shore, go farther away because of what I need to do. My brethren, the life of the Son of God, is, that's how it is, is, is far away from the land. It's the shore here represents the things of this life, the things that hold us to this world, what is taking away our peace and our joy, uh, what so many times is hindering our lives and bringing us down, bringing deceptions, causing disappointment and failures. When you go away from the land, when Jesus said, go away from the land because I'm going to speak, and that's exactly what God begins to do in man's life. It's not that we are now different. It's not that we are now special. No. You know why? Because we have learned that the best life is the life in Jesus. And the greatest joy is the assurance that we have of having Jesus as the captain of our boat. The best thing that man can do is to say, God, I'm a professional, I have knowledge, I dedicate, I work, but sea is not good for fishing. 
how many go through this situation? We all go through this situation. There are moments in our lives, today you have health, but tomorrow infirmity might come. Today you are well, but tomorrow the trial might come. And those are moments in which Jesus says, go far away from the, from the land. Show the net here in this place. Those are moments in which God begins to take control of our lives. We are no longer owners of our destiny, destiny anymore. We are no longer the pilots of our, of our lives and the commanders of our lives. But now Jesus begins to be the pilot. He is the one who is going to bring us to waters where there are truly there are fruits. Jesus is the one who knows. He knows where you should throw your net and you'll be able to be to catch fish because he knows all things. Many times we uh, we all our knowledge we uh, uh, Peter was a fisherman but he depended on his luck but not the servant of God. But the servant of God does not depend on luck. The servant of God does not depend on men. The servant of God does not depend on uh, governors of this world. But we depend on the powerful word of Jesus. <coughs> we can only trust in the okay from God. That's why you who entered here, that's why we need we need to bring to you so that you may open up, open your heart. Open the you can um, now listen to the sweet voice of God, the voice that will bring the voice that will bring solution to your problems, the voice that can bring healing, the voice that can bring deliverance, the voice that can. The voice that can give you once again a rest, a night in which you may lay your head on your pillow and wake up in the morning, trusting and aware that God is in your home. The voice that is going to bring you salvation, because salvation is only in Jesus. May God help us. Let us hear a song.
receber o nome do Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. Para nós encerrarmos esse culto. My brethren, the reason for our joy as a church is because we have Jesus in our hearts. And the reason of our joy is because we are away from the land. Because Jesus lives in our hearts. And that's what causes men, the servant of God, the Christian, to go back to this environment, to this house, to the presence of the Father. Because we come back here because we are thankful to Him for all the deeds of the Lord in our behalf. And the Lord tonight is speaking to a man who entered here that has been going through a very difficult moment when we're praying for the service, specifically tonight. We have been praying for the entire month for our co-workers, but this services specifically while, while the church was praying for the service God has shown that a man would enter here tonight a man that has been going through a difficult moment in his life his professional life his familial life moment in which he doesn't have hope anymore he does is not certain about what is going to happen tomorrow but it is interesting that the Lord shows one thing you have been invited to come to the service and he said I'm going there All right. I'm going there because the invitation has been made to me nothing can be done to my situation I'm already losing my hope but the Lord is saying to you you have been a target of many prayers not only for this month not only for today but there are family members there are people the build, uh, loving people that that you love there are praying for you and tonight you're arriving here you think that had no purpose for you to come here but there is a great reason why you came here it's because God because God loves you and he wants to take control of your life he wants to change your luck he wants to change your destination not only yours but your of your entire family so, amen. So, open your heart and allow Jesus to enter. And the Lord also has shown another man that has been um, uh, accused in, uh, unjustly and has been suffering for a while with this accusation. It's unjust. And it has brought to him great suffering. And every attack, every accusation that he hears he thinks, I'm going to exact vengeance, vengeance with my own hands. And the Lord is telling you, don't do that. Uh, justice belongs to God. And He is your judge. Don't do that. Give your problem into God's author. That's what we do. When the trial increases, when the attacks increase, we run to the altar of God. And the church has learned, Jesus has taught us, God has taught us that He is our judge. He is the best judge. Because the justice from God is always right. So do this. You who are going through this moment of difficulty, make prayer to the Lord and say, Lord, do the same way as Peter did. I'm going to trust in you. I wanted to do it on my own, but I'm going to test it. I'm going to place this problem into your author. What I'm going through, I'm going to put it into your author. I'm asking you to resolve it. Do this with faith. Do this according to the Word of God. And you will be a witness that God speaks and He fulfills what He says. You will be a witness that God, when He promises, He acts on the behalf of our lives.
Lord to Jesus. Amen. We're going to have a word of a, a prayer of glorification to the Lord. Lord, glorify your name for yet another day in your presence. For everything you have done in your midst. For the blessings given to your co workers. For the pouring out of your spirit. We thank you for everything you have done and you ought to do in the midst of your people. Lord God, may your word may remain in our hearts and that your spirit may have freedom to operate, Lord, removing sadness, rem removing any doubt, removing uh, any questioning, the lack of faith, Remove, Lord, everything that is not part of your project and that our spirit may have freedom to confirm the salvation of those who are seeking your presence. Lord, may every prayer that has been made here in your house tonight, that you may receive them. And that if it is your will, Lord, that you may answer with might because our trust is only in you. We do not want anything from anyone, Lord, but we only wait for your help, Lord. That's why, Lord, receive your, our service in our adoration to your name, in gratitude for your deeds, for the miracles, for the open doors, for the healings, for the provision and your sustenance, for your great love towards our lives. Take us home in peace, and that we may have, Lord, this week, answer, Lord, positive answers, and that we may see with our eyes of faith and contemplate that you are God, a powerful God. Take us home in peace. Give us a, give us a week of victories in your presence, the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, this gifts and the comfort and the consolation of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The congregation may sit down. We are going to now begin the period of assistance. The church will remain in prayer, singing so softly, and if you want an assist, a personal assistance. Jesus here spoke to the multitude and then he went to Peter and he said, Peter, it's just the two of us. And that's how, what God wants to do. If you want a personal assistance, we are making ourselves available to pray for you. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord, I want to thank those who uh, answer our invitations. You are very welcome. It is a pleasure to have you amongst our friends and brethren, our co-workers, to know all of you. The peace of the Lord Jesus.